You are tuned in to the COVID-19 Community Report here on KDRT 95.7 FM in Davis, California, and welcome to you. I'm Autumn Labbe Renault, and today is Tuesday, August 4th, 2020. We're sharing local news and resources, focusing on what's impacting Davis and nearby cities in Yolo County during the COVID-19 pandemic. Since March, we've recorded 30 episodes, and today marks interviews 49 and 50, respectively. So my thanks to all who have participated, listened, and provided feedback. It's been my goal to help provide a narrative for how individuals, organizations, communities, and cultural groups are weathering this pandemic. And a reminder that you can listen to this or any KDRT show at any time on KDRT.org. Today we're doing a deep dive into local theater arts, and we'll hear how one venue and one theater company are working to survive and remain vital during the pandemic, and also to be ready for whatever it is that comes next. What will theater shows and concerts look like in the future? My guests today are Joseph Fletcher, who's nearing his one-year anniversary as the theater manager for the City of Davis at the Veterans Memorial Theater, and Sarah Marsh Crowder, who is the literary manager and company dramaturg for Bike City Theater Company. A report from CNN today notes that the seven-day average of new daily coronavirus cases is at about 60,000 and slowly declining, but deaths, which typically lag several weeks behind, are steadily increasing. For a week straight, the U.S. has had an average of over 1,000 deaths per day. Across the country, more than 4.7 million have been infected since the start of the pandemic, and at least 155,000 have died. Health officials project, project, project there will be thousands more deaths in the coming weeks. So how are we doing here in Yolo County? As of yesterday, Yolo County has 1,582 confirmed cases and has experienced 42 deaths. Our failure to meet state benchmarks has put our county on the state's watch list, which can result in increased oversight and additional closures to combat the virus. We're on that list because over the past two weeks, the county has recorded 420 new cases, which means we're failing the standard for disease transmission. If there's good news, it's that the number of hospitalizations has been steady. There are currently only eight patients hospitalized with a confirmed or suspected case, and the county's hospital capacity is within state standards. Less than 80% of ICU beds are occupied, and at least 75% of ventilators are available. So that's the good news. The county's dashboard show that just under 25,000 people have been tested, and that's out of a countywide population of about 220,000, which equates to roughly 11% of people having been tested. Where testing sites in recent months have typically been at one location, this month Yolo County Public Health is offering free COVID-19 testing at quite a number of locations in Yolo County, and their hope is that this will provide greater community accessibility to testing. There are many dates and testing sites available across the county, and the best thing to do is visit covidtesting.yolocounty.org, and that's where you'll find all the dates and details. For general questions about COVID-19, the county offers a COVID-19 Response Operations Center line. You can get there, 833-965-6268. And finally, does COVID-19 have you feeling stressed, anxious, or lonely? Um, I'm, I'm raising my hand here, feeling some of that, and I bet there are many others out there too. The Cal Hope Warm Line has free resources to manage stress and a call line to talk about your struggles. That number is 833-317-4673, and it's free and confidential. We're going to take a moment for music, and we'll be back shortly with our first interview. Alrighty, and thanks to Don Shore for providing that little bit of boogie-woogie interlude. My first guest today is Joseph Fletcher, who's a theater artist and arts administrator. Much of his work focuses on collaboration and co-design with community-making, original, social, and civic practice theater. And he'll explain that to us, I hope. Before moving to Davis, he was a founding member and artistic producer for the Artist Laboratory Theater, a nonprofit community-based theater in Fayetteville, Arkansas. 
and in various capacities. He's worked with the Walnut Street Theater, Cirque du Soleil, the National Tour of Chicago the Musical, the Signature Theater, and a whole bunch more. He has a BFA in theater from the University of Central Florida, and this fall he'll pursue an MFA in dramatic arts right here at UC Davis. Welcome to you, Joseph. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Good, good to hear your voice. We uh, we met at a couple of Arts, Arts Alliance meetings um, earlier this year, before the sickness, as my husband has taken to saying. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're actually talking about your role as the theater manager for the city of Davis at the Veterans Memorial Theater. And you've been here for about a year and quite a year to uh, try to launch a new a new role in a new community. So let's start. Please tell us a little bit about what you were hired to do, and then we'll talk about what you've actually been doing during the pandemic. Well, sure. Well, I, I was I was hired to sort of whip the theater back into shape a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, it needed a little bit of love, um, some some uh, a lot of physical upgrades for the space, repairs, maintenance, um, a, a lot of a lot of the really boring nitty gritty things of the theater. Um, <laughs> Uh, but uh, it's actually what one of the few blessings of, of COVID is the actual time in the space to do some of that work. Um, the, the start of the year was a little bit difficult to do that work because we, we were booked up. We, I came in about the time we were ending with the Davis Shakespeare being in residence here mm-hmm. and going into the Nutcracker. And then immediately after that, after that Acme was here and then uh, COVID hit not that far after. So <laughs> yeah. it, it's really been this summer that we've finally been able to get in here and, and get a lot of that work done. Right. So it is a very well-utilized community theater. And when you say it needed a little love, tell us what that means. Oh, just, you know, like the, the dimmer system hadn't been uh, sprayed out with all the dust on it for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, there is a huge backlog of like old equipment from, you know, two or three decades ago that we've been through and then sorting and we've inventoried and taken out everything in the space, reorganized, labeled. Um, just sort of making it a, a easier place to function in and, you know, creating a, a better place for renters to come in and be able to use our things. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned some of the, the things that happened there. And really, over the years, I've attended everything from that children's nutcracker to film screenings, live theater, live music. Um, it's It's just, it's a really kind of intimate venue. And I think it's a real community treasure. So as you wrap up that sort of clearing out, I know when we first talked, you said that um, you're getting ready for sort of what the next pivot is going to be. So tell us about that. Yeah, well, step one is, is getting, getting it ship shape. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I think the second two is, is getting the administrative side kind of back, back up to par as well, reviewing all of our policy and procedures, uh, looking at how things are run, you know, the number of crew that are supporting each show. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think prior to me being here, there was only one or two crew typically on any um, on any show. And we're hoping to provide a little bit more technical support for folks. Um, we, we've had some lighting upgrades. So there's more we can do. But also, too, if you've, you've walked walk into the space and you've never used the lights before, you definitely need somebody here who's familiar with how to program them and, to, you know, better plan for the amount of time you're going to need. To, to program them to do all the fancy stuff. Right. Um, so we're just we're looking to improve customer service as well. Um, and then and then generally, too, like looking at, uh, you know, like systems of accounting or looking at uh, how, uh, you know, we, we just got a new defibrillator for the theater, like, you know, what, are, what our safety protocols are. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's step two. And then step three is what I'm most excited about um, is starting to develop new ideas. Like a lot of my, my background is in... Um, uh, social and civic practice theater, um, right. and looking at ways to activate the space even more than it is right now, um, uh, and getting people in here more often, and making it more of like what the original vision of the, the Veterans Memorial Center was, was that it was a community hub um, where people were in and out. Now we have you know, performances every once in a while, so you know, two days out of the week there might be something in here, but trying to really make it something that there's, there's living and breathing, maybe organizations being here um, more often, using the space more, um, just it much more active. Yeah, I know one of the things you've talked about at Arts Alliance is kind of steering the theater. Um, I believe you said it was kind of back into a role it had once played, which was sort of social and socially and civil, civically minded um, partnerships. And there was actually the the city just got an award for something, and I, I want to make sure we mention that because it, it, oh, it's yeah. kind of an example of that. And it also ties into my second interview today with uh, Sarah from Bike City Theater. 
Uh, the city was just awarded the Helen Putnam Award for Economic Development through the Arts. That's through the California League of Cities. And the award was specific to a program the city commissioned from uh, Bike City Theater Company next year. So, I mean, to hear the words economic development and arts in the same sentence is pretty powerful, especially at a time when arts funding um, is has been cut, you know, pretty significantly here in Davis for this year. So... Is that the kind of stuff you're you're talking about partnering yeah. with other existing organizations? What's your vision yeah, for I, that? It's, well, because we're, we're never going to like the the, it's the this is a city run venue, so we're never going to be producing our own work. But mm-hmm. I think our role and uh, needs to expand from just being a rental venue to, to taking a more active role in the community and supporting the work that's here. Right. Um, so I, I love I love this idea of like economic development, of course, right? Like there's there's you know. Uh, research out there that it's every dollar spent on the arts generates four or five dollars for the community that's around it. Exactly. Um, so like one of the best ways to stimulate the economy is to invest in your arts, arts scene. Um, uh, but I, I think we can hold up organizations. You know, we have resources that we can share here and mm-hmm. we, we're looking to find ways to do it. And those resources are equipment, space, some expertise to share, time, um, and then, you know, relationships. Um, yeah. Rachel Hartso, who, who's head of arts and culture, has been been here for a, a long time and, and knows a lot of people and is really great at matchmaking. Um, and, and a lot of the work that I, I really want to support is, you know, I think I think community theater gets a bad rap. It's a, uh, what you kind of expect, you know, a, a lot of amateur people on stage doing mm-hmm. doing like name name the play. Um, but really, <laughs> I, I think community theater um, is is really the future of theater. It's really should be stories that are being told either by the community or making with the community that are addressing their aspirations, their, their hopes, their goals, um, and helping to achieve those. So I, I think the arts and performing arts or theater, which is my background, is uniquely positioned to deal with things like COVID, get messaging out to, um, you know, this Bike City play is about bike, you know, bike, bike safety and communicating this new policy from their partner. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I think there's lots of opportunities, uh, especially us being entrenched in the city. We could we could help out public works. We could help out uh, the parks department. Like, right. You know, we we and we have, I think are uniquely positioned to to match make and put people together and share resources and support. That's going to grow our arts economy. That's going to you know benefit other parts that uh, other other parts of the city and other other things that are socially important to us here in Davis. Right. Um, right. So I'm just excited for the opportunity to to start implementing some of that. Well, and I hope the pandemic eases up and, you know, you, you get that opportunity to implement. And speaking of the pandemic and looking towards the future, you know, yeah. we all know that our, our venues are really struggling. Now, as you've mentioned, the Vets Theater is is under the auspices of the city, and so it's not in exactly the same position that something like the Harris Center up in Folsom, which is now sure. completely closed until mid-2021. They're not doing, you know, any of their offerings. So moving forward, how what do you think it'll look like? Like how will people be spaced in in the theater? What kind of precautions uh, should be taken so that people can actually enjoy live theater or live music again? Well, well, two thoughts about that. The first is the sad reality is we're the last thing that's probably coming back. Yeah, um, uh, it's you know having several hundred people in a small enclosed indoor space is is uh, one of the hardest environments to deal with mm-hmm. in, a, in a pandemic. Um, there are things that we're planning to do to mitigate that. Um, when we get to stage four, um, we'll start being open to the public again, but under really restricted uh, capacity for the theater. So sure. essentially, we're going to cut off every other seat. People are going to be seated, or a party of people. You can come in with with you know your your significant other, or your kids, um, and sit together, um, but three rows apart, uh, three seats apart from the nearest next group. So more than six feet distance in the theater. Um, and a whole host of other policies and procedures. We, we just wrote something like a 25-page, 30-page document for all the, the weirdness of, of socially distancing <laughs> in a theater. Um, and that includes stuff for backstage for our renters. Um, uh, so it's, it's going to be small to start off with, smaller mm-hmm. events. Um, and I think in, in general, too, is like, you know, we're, we're somewhere in phase three right now. Um, and we are able to come back and do this work, as, you know, working distance as a, as a crew, um, but eventually we'll be able to have other things in here. So like looking to pivot to other other ideas as theater companies are and being there to support that. So streaming performances, staged readings, um, even even just rehearsals or, or, you know, if somebody needs distanced office space, like yeah. trying to find solutions like that to offer to, to community organizations or renters um, to make use of the space while it's sitting here empty. Right. Um, 
that it's been useful to us to get the work done right now, but yeah. soon that's gonna that, that work will finish. We will we will pivot again exactly. Yes. Well, it's great to have someone with your experience and your passion for this work here in Davis. I want to thank you for joining me today. And if people want to find out more at the theater or reach you, what's the best way to do that? Oh, uh, well, I, I got my email here at the city. It's jfletcher at cityofdavis.org. Okay. Um, and most of our online content right now is on the arts and culture page. So okay. check out the city's art and culture page for any updates or info about the theater. Right, and there's also a, a Facebook page for city yep. arts and culture, too. All yes, right, indeed. Joseph, great speaking with you. Take care, stay safe, and uh, I'll see you sometime in the future. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks. All right, we'll take another moment for music as we get ready for our second interview. Well, folks, we're still waiting for our second caller. I'm going to go ahead and read this while we are waiting. Uh, Just a chance to say thank you for tuning in to KDRT 95.7 FM here in Davis, California, where the grassroots grow. During this COVID-19 pandemic, we're doing what we can to bring the freshest radio possible to you. Some programmers are able to broadcast from our studio, like me, to you, live, right now, while others are recording at home, and still others are airing shows from the archive. Every week, we seem to be bringing more and more people back in one way or another. So we'll continue to broadcast the freshest radio we can while helping to keep our community safe. We hope you enjoy the broadcast. We appreciate your support of KDRT 95.7 FM, Davis, California, and KDRT.org online. And when you go to the website or our social media, you'll see opportunities to donate and support this fine community resource. Yes, we're going to go back to some music here. Well, hi, folks. I had a second interview scheduled, and uh, the caller has not made it onto the air to join us today, and it's a little bit late in the game for that. So I'm going to read one more announcement, and we're going to go out with some more music today. I did want to mention that Yolo County has a new packet on isolation quarantine with important instructions. The second item is how to isolate at home if you test positive, even if you do or do not have symptoms. We'll share a post today about the items. uh, That's the county saying that on yolocounty.org. And uh, you can also visit their testing page, which I want to give out again, covidtesting.yolocounty.org. And we're just going to listen to some more music and, and go out on that today. Thanks so much.